All right, so um, Google Colab is a really handy tool if you need to run Python code online. Um, so in this course, we're going to be doing a um, fair amount of work where you might need to run various Python tools. So I'm going to give you a quick introduction to uh, Colab. So um, what you'll do is that you'll you'll log in so to colab.research.google.com. And you'll get this page here. Um, and you, so you'll have to have a Google account logged in um, for this to work. So you don't have to use Colab. You can use any just Python um, yourself if you want. But I'm just pointing this out because it's kind of a handy uh, way to do it for free. Um, so this uses something called Notebook. So if we hit New Notebook down here, um, this allows us to run Python code in the web browser. So I'm not going to give a full introduction to Jupyter, um, but basically with Jupyter, so if you haven't used Python before, it's a pretty easy language. Um, so you'll have to find some other resources for an intro. I'll link, link some below. Um, but we can basically run individual Python commands and it keeps everything that we run sort of in the, um, in this memory space here. Um, so if I define a variable a up here, I can print the variable, um, the value of it here. And we can even go up here and print it as well. So, so you, it isn't all running linearly. That's, it can get you into trouble and stuff like that. But if you're just doing some little testing, um, it's, it's really nice. It's really easy to do that. So um, one thing in the, the first assignment that you need to do is you're going to count um, how many characters are in a different uh, text string. So if we make a text string um, like this, right? And so this basically allows us to copy and paste some text. So let's just find some, some text. Um, and let's just go, um, I'm just gonna generate some text over here, randompassages.com. Um, So I just copied from randompassages.com, whatever this is. Um, so it's some text here, right? So we can print the text and we wanna count um, how many of each letters are in there. So you'll want to do with Python, um, we can turn that text into lowercase, right? Because what we're gonna do is just uh, count each character and, and we don't care if it's capitalized or not. Um, so text.lower, right? So I can now say lower text equals that. Okay, so we have a new variable. Um, and we now wanna access each character in it. So for um, C in lower text, print C, right? So this is just printing out each character at a time. Um, but that hasn't told us yet Right, what we want to do is actually um, understand what what number of characters um, or how many times each character ran. Um, there's a few ways to do this. So one way is that we could actually just print, um, if you get an ASCII table, so each character has an associated um, value, and this is like the ASCII value of it. Um, and we can use a function called ORD, which gives us a number associated with um, each value. And the nice thing about this is if you look down here, ORD, and if we look at like um, ORD A, so if we look at the value of A, let's make this a little bigger for you. Sorry, it's huge scroll here. Okay. If we look at what is the value of A, you can see it's 97 B, so it's actually gonna be um, incrementing, right? So we can use then um, 97 as A. Um, you'll notice that there's some other numbers in here, like 32. 32 is a space, right? So the space character, um, there's like, you know, commas in there and stuff like that. We don't care about any of the stuff that's, that's below A um, or after Z. So we could make our code do like this and say, okay, um, if C is um, greater or equal than A, right? And C, so we're basically saying, um, let's take characters 
Oops, I already messed it up. Um, up. We need to convert this if we want to do it this way. Right. So now it's it's ignoring spaces and stuff like that. Right. So let's see, it's just got rid of spaces. Okay. Um, the next thing we want to do is um, figure out. So right now this is um, just printing the character. So if we print the ORD again, we we get some offset here. Um, so let's just say print or let's say this like. C num equals um, ORD, so the, the value of C minus the value of A, because A is the starting point of it. And let's print that. Um, so now we're getting, this should be just zero to 25, right? Because it's there's up to 26 characters and this is zero reference. So if there was even a Z here, um, we get 25, but I don't even, I don't know if there is this at. So this was just standard English text. Remember in the assignment, you're going to be doing this for um, non-standard text. So you're going to be generating um, a histogram for a different value. Um, so finally, we could say like, you know, histogram this. Um, so this is going to generate a list that's the right length and we, we don't need to print it anymore. And every time we hit a given letter, um, so histogram, cnum, increment it by one. And if we run this, and then if we look at that histogram value, you can see, so if we plot this now, what we should get is a nice bar graph showing um, what the, 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 letter frequency is. Um, so how do you plot in Python? Um, the easiest way is to use something called matplotlib. Um, and so the, the default way is you do like this plot. So if we say plot.plot .plot, um, histogram, we'll get this this thing look, that looks like this. Now, now, this is assuming it's a bar graph, right? So we actually probably want a bar graph instead of a, a like line graph, or this is assuming it's a line graph. So we can just change this to bar. Um, and when we have bar, we need to specify an X, right? So this would be like, we just say, hey, the X axis is just number zero to 26. Um, and we get our bar graph. So this should look very similar, right? This was a short section of text, but this should look very similar to um, the English language character frequency. Um, you'll notice this is, um, not very nice on the x-axis. So what you'll want to do is go check out um, what, so if I shift click or tab click or something on this, um, one second, let's just pull up, it was coming up there. Okay, there you go. Uh, I want the bar function. So, okay, parameters for bar. So I kind of hovered over it. Um, and we have a tick label parameter, which will be the tick labels of the bar. Um, so we can use this. Oops, tick labels, right? To then make this a, a sorry, keeps, keeps trying to hover over me. I don't want to do that. The, Etc. So if I just put AB to label, maybe. What did I do wrong? Uh, okay, so it needs the full length. So you need to go ABC. So that's going to be really boring to do. Um, we can use a method in Python to help us with that. So if I say, what is the character? Um, you know, that has 97, it's going to map it to A. Um, and so I could just automatically build this list by saying, give me the character uh, I for I in range um, 97 and then 26 later. 
And so this uses um, a Python list to generate everything here. So, so that's just a little example of plotting in Python. I have, I've gone over um, you know, a whole bunch of stuff here, but what I really wanna show you is that you can pretty quickly spin up a Colab instance, um, do some different types of plotting, right? And so you'll find a lot of documentation on this online um, and you'll just have to explore you know, quite a bit about how to get this to, to fully work for your example. But um, yeah, and you can give it a, a file name finally, right? So example plotting in Colab. Um, and then this will generate a plot for us.